Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Daily Try. Today, I've got a guest on who I was lucky enough to meet at Challenge Roth, and I couldn't believe just how well he did. A 7.46.59 with a 2.39 marathon, which is the third fastest Canadian time ever. So watch out, Lionel. You've got some serious competition. <laughs> but I heard some snippets of his amazing story as well, including how he was a former hockey player and transitioned into triathlon rather late for how well he's currently doing. So I'm dying to hear about this story and share it with you as well. So Jason Paul, thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Th thanks a lot for, uh, for having me here. And, uh, yeah, it was great to, you know, meet you in Roth and, um, you know, have a couple drinks over our stories and yeah, just, <laughs> just connect that way. So everybody was in such good spirits there at Roth after that crazy event. And, uh, that was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a wild event. Like that was my first time racing in Roth. And I mean, it, it, there's nothing like it. Like, you know, you have, over 300,000 spectators and I mean the atmosphere is just it was just wild like um but such a fun race just really really enjoyed it um and yeah I mean it was it was a cool experience we're gonna unpack it in detail because that was a heck of a performance but first tell us about your background how you ended up getting into triathlon but I also want to hear about this hockey as well <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so I mean, typical Canadian, Canadian boy, just, uh, you know, growing up playing hockey. Uh, actually I got into hockey when I was six years old. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think like, I, I just remember when I was six years old, like we get to try all the different positions and I tried, uh, I tried a goaltender and, um, played my first game as a goalie and then just fell in love with it. Like, you know, being by myself and, you know, being the go-to <laughs> guy. And, um, so yeah, so basically from six years old to the age of 22, I was a, I was a goalie, um, you know, moved through the ranks, uh, you know, I've kind of played at the highest level I could, you know, each year. Um, and, uh, yeah, just like, you know, really, really ambitious, you know, that's all I really dreamt about was, you know, going to the NHL being, you know, that, <laughs> that, that professional goaltender, um, you know, day in, day out, just actually, I lived on a farm and, uh, that's all I do is, you know, outside of school and, and on ice hockey is like just on the farm, just, you know, strap on the pads or, and, and just like play some grass hockey and stuff with all my buddies. And, you know, that's kind of all I, all I dreamt of. Um, so yeah, I got to the junior level, which is like, you know, almost like semi-pro, um, basically once you get to the junior level, you want to be scouted to, uh, you know, get drafted to the NHL. And, uh, so yeah, I got to the junior level and, um, yeah, kind of once I got to that level, I started developing, uh, lung issues. So I had like, uh, collapses to my left lung and, uh, yeah, I think the first one I was like 16 years old and then, yeah, I, I think I had about 12 more lung collapses after that. Wow. Um, through the course of the next, you know, four years. And, uh, so yeah, kind of my, <laughs> my important years of, um, hockey, you know, to make it to the next level, I was battling these lung collapses, how to get major lung surgery. Um, and that was about an eight month, uh, rehab process. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty intense. So, um, so yeah, ultimately long story short is, you know, that kind of put a end to my, you know, serious hockey career. Um, wow. and then, yeah, like after, after that, I was like, oh, you know, kind of through the rehab and start getting healthy again. I was like, oh, like, you know, I really want to like, you know, put this thing behind me and, you know, still show what I can do. And, you know, I fell in love with like human performance and, and then I started researching like endurance activities and endurance sports and <laughs> I stumbled upon a marathon. Um, so I signed up for a marathon and uh, I was playing, still playing hockey at the time, just not at like the super high level, um, but we got knocked out of playoffs and I was like, okay, as soon as I got knocked out of playoffs, it was like kind of like my last year of, of hockey. And I was like, yeah, going to sign up for this marathon 
jumped into it like I think a month later after playoffs and uh, ended up oh, wow. not doing not too bad at it. So it was uh but for me it was like I've never experienced anything like you know that mentally and physically you know demanding. Um, I mean, I was completely wrecked at the end of this marathon, <laughs> like in a wheelchair. Why does it oh, go? It's like <laughs> dizzy. What was your time? Uh, I think three, three eighteen. Wow. Three twelve. Three twelve. Sorry, three twelve. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> so um, after that, I was like, "Dang!" Like you know, this is cool. Uh, so yeah, I think um, the following year, I was twenty three years old. Um, signed up for my first triathlon did not ever swim in my life so that was really really a big learning curve you know how mm. to swim so jumped in the pool <laughs> could barely get to the end of the end of the pool like 25 meters was just a huge struggle um so uh yeah did this first triathlon you know i still kind of had my hockey ego i was like you know into crossfit at the time and i was like oh yeah like i'm fit now and feeling good and I jumped into this triathlon and man I just got like yeah completely destroyed in it <laughs> like trying to <laughs> run 10k off the bike and stuff was it was a whole new thing for me so um so yeah I just kind of like you know again just fell in love with you know the kind of like that pain that you know what am I capable of kind of like that next level and uh yeah that's uh that's essentially how I you know got into uh triathlon <laughs> That's incredible. Oh my goodness. Doing the hockey. Uh, did you do any endurance at all? Like being a goalie during that time? Did you ever run or bike during that time? Um, you... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like sprinting stuff. Sprinting, so yeah. <laughs> like a lot of like anaerobic things, but um, I just remember in the summer we would do this uh, two mile run every Tuesday. And like, I think I was like, you know, 15, 16, 17 when I was training, you know, at this gym in the summer where a lot of like NHL players go and everything. And so we'd all like do this two mile run and uh, I would always come in like first place, like just kind of blow wow. the doors off everyone. So I was like, ah, oh, like maybe I got like this thing for running and stuff. And yeah, so that was literally, you know, two miles it seems like nothing now, but <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. All right. So you're 23, did your first triathlon. Was that an Ironman? And then afterwards, what did you think? And and how did you progress to where you are now at this point? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my first, my first triathlon, like it was Olympic distance. And I just used like, uh, it was my grandpa's like old steel 1970 road bike. Um, I don't think I could shift into like the biggest gear, but um, I was just like, you know, just tried it out. And then uh, after I was like, dang, like this is so much fun. So the following year, 2014, um, dove right into it, signed up for an Ironman, uh, which was Ironman Canada and Whistler at the time. Um, and, uh, yeah, like actually trained for this. Um, and I, I think like, you know, looking back, something that really inspired me at that time was I was training, uh, in BC, which is just North of, of you where you are in in Washington. Yep. And, uh, there's a pro, um, he, uh, he is from the UK actually. So he would actually come to BC every summer and train for, you know, a month or two. And, uh, I, you know, was fortunate enough to meet him and, you know, jumped on a couple longer rides with him and, you know, picked his brain and stuff. And, um, I was like, Oh, like so cool. And I was like, you know, I want to like, I was like, I want to like be like him one day. And <laughs> oh, yeah. so, yeah. Um, so got, you know, got to train with him, learn from him, um, learn a little bit more about like nutrition, did some research on that, you know, research, like, you know, running off the bike and, and, and things like that. And then so I went into Ironman Canada in 2014. Um, and I think I went like 10, 10, 21 and like second in my age group and qualified for Kona. So, um, and you know, I was actually didn't really know what Kona was at the time either. So, wow. So I YouTube Kona, I was like, Oh man, like the whole history behind it. I was like, I gotta go. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, so. insane and whistler is a tough course i was actually my first one as well so at 10 21 there is pretty dang good for your first one <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow all right so yeah you realize you had a knack for it heading to kona and uh yeah you know? yeah i went into kona um in 2014 and then 
uh, yeah, I didn't really, you know, understand how to race in the heat and everything like that. So went to Kona, um, actually was doing pretty good. Uh, I think up until like 150 kilometers on the bike. And then I remember like pulling over and getting sick because of like dehydration and couldn't stomach things. Um, and then ran the marathon and then probably walked like the last, I don't know, like 16 miles. Uh, cause I was like, uh, I don't know, like I think I was just like so low on electrolytes and I actually started like getting cold and stuff. And, um, so I finished and then ended up, you know, in the medical tent, um, in and out of consciousness, uh, like irregular heartbeats and stuff. And then they shipped me off to the Kona hospital. Um, they like, yeah, put me on like this potassium IV and, uh, liquid IV and, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, <laughs> I was like, you know, in a really, really like tough, dark place there. Um, but after like, you know, in the middle of the night, my family brought me McDonald's to, you know, get some food back into me and, you know, in the middle of the night, I was just like, oh, like, you know, almost went from like, you know, literally like close to, you know, fighting for my life because of like my heart was really low on potassium and, and stuff wow. like that to, you know, going like, wow, like, you know, this was also, you know, the coolest experience of my life. And, you know, at that <laughs> point, it was like, you know, I kind of found my, my, my limits at that time. I was like, oh, I love to like, you know, try and see what I can do with, with triathlon. So I think like, yeah, in the middle of the, in the night and in, in the Kona hospital, I was like, yeah, like I'm going to, you know, try and become a professional. So, um, so yeah, two years, I think it was two years. Yeah. End of 2016, you know, saw a lot of success, uh, actually hired a coach at the time and then saw a lot of success as an age grouper. And then 2017, uh, was my first, you know, I guess dabble in the pro field. Um, oh. and at, at the time I was graduated university, started up my own wealth management practice. Uh, so like I was, you know, racing triathlon at, you know, a semi-competitive level and, you know, building up this wealth management practice that, you know, I always had ambition to, you know, do big things with. Wow. Um, and then at the end of 2018, uh, yeah, I was like, you know, I saw a little bit of success in the in the pro field. Um, and at the end, and in 2018, I was like, you know, my heart was with, you know, being with an athlete. And, and like, I was like, ah, oh, like, you know, I just feel like, you know, I was, I was built to be an athlete. And I kind of got robbed of my hockey career. And, you know, I have this opportunity in front of me. I was like, I have to go for this. So I, yeah, kind of, you know, sold off my wealth management practice, kind of sold wow. off everything. And, um moved to Boulder, Colorado and, uh, yeah, began my, uh, full-time professional, uh, triathlete journey. So that's an insane story. And taking it back to the Kona thing, it's amazing. I think so many of the listeners might relate to that where triathlon seems to go very wrong for a lot of us and it makes us want to do it so much more. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's wrong <laughs> with all of us triathletes, but yeah, it's, it's crazy how sometimes the, the biggest failure can lead you to, you know, wanting to do it again and wanting to give it another go, beat your PB, that kind of thing. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. And yeah, it, we're just, we're just weird, weird human <laughs> beings, I tell you. <laughs> yes. And, uh, Going back, just listening to that. So you had your um, your lung surgery and all of that. Did you ever have problems afterwards? It it must sound crazy to some listeners. It does to me that after going through all those collapses and the surgery, and, and now you're able to do this Ironman at the highest level. Um, so what were your lungs like afterwards? And 100. percent Yeah. Um, well, after after the surgery, like I. Um... I have a staple on my left lung, so I'll have that in there for the rest of my life. Um, I won't be able to ever scuba dive or skydive, which it's like scuba dive I mean, would be pretty cool, but skydiving, I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm <kinda laughs> just afraid of heights. So, you know, it's not a big loss, but um, yeah, it was uh, after the surgery, I still had some lung collapses um, and yeah. And then I, I think like, you know, strangely enough, as soon as I found like endurance uh, sports, like uh, I never had an episode since. So, um, you know, knock on wood, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'm probably what, you know, 10 years into it now that, 
you know, I haven't had, uh, you know, a long collapse, which is strange because, you know, you think about what we do as triathletes or as endurance athletes and, you know, the amount of stress we put on our cardiovascular system. Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool that, you know, I can do this. So. Yeah, that is insane. Um, okay. 2018, you said you're starting out your pro career fully. You sold off your wealth management practice. Um, you're still pretty, pretty young and pretty new at it. Um, uh, take us through what those yeah. first couple of years were like. I think a lot of people are pretty interested in, in hearing what the first yeah. couple of years of a pro life is like. <laughs> well, I, I just remember, you know, um, before I made that leap kind of, you know, call it leap of faith. I had, you know, two sponsors say, Hey, I want to want you to do a business plan oh, and good. let's go over a business plan together. And, you know, let's see your trajectory for five years. So I was like, okay, like we went back and forth on this business plan. And then when it was up to their standards and it was up to my standards, it was like, okay, now we're going to do this. Um, but <laughs> you know, you have a plan, <laughs> and, you know, a plan is one thing and reality is another thing. And, uh, yeah, um, the first, you know, two years as a pro athlete were friggin' brutal. Like it was just like, I jumped right into the deep end and I was like, I gotta figure this out now. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, 20, 2019, um, I don't think, I think one race I was like once in the money. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, you look at your revenue versus expense. I was definitely at a negative profit, you know, in 2019, um, 2020, uh, started working with, uh, coach Ryan Bolton, um, placed fifth at uh, 70.3 early on, uh, in March right before COVID happened. And then, you know, obviously we all know what happened in 2020 with racing and stuff, which was tough, but. Um, you know, he pushed me, we kind of utilized that time to really like, you know, develop myself and, uh, you know, become stronger in all three disciplines. Uh, and then 2021 came and, uh, yeah, I think I raced, yeah, Ironman Coraline placed fourth there, um, had the fastest marathon and I was like, okay, like, you know, maybe, you know, I'm kind of going back onto the right path here. Um, you know, I was like motivated to keep progressing and, and, you know, keep growing into like a world-class, uh, professional. And then literally it was a week after, uh, quarterly and I got into a bike crash and got a concussion. Oh. And then, uh, three weeks after that, I got another concussion to train my swim warm up, which is just so strange. Jeez. And then, um, I think it was like two months after that I was preparing for, uh, Ironman Chattanooga and I was hit by a car, um, and messed up, you know, my, my left hip pretty good, which ultimately led to a DNF in chat. Uh, and then, yeah, after that, uh, blew up my right hip flexor gearing up for a later season race. And then, so like 2021 was just a oh. super, super tough year after you know you s just a little taste of success in at ironman quarter lane yeah um uh so and then you know from there is just battling injuries like um yeah 2021 to so last year i had two torn achilles tendons that you know i was trying to manage but um between you know getting into the bike crashes and uh you know, battling two torn Achilles tendons. Um, you know, I was just, <laughs> yeah, I could like get, I was at the point where I could barely walk and like my body wasn't even functioning and wow. you know, I was still trying to race because like I needed to, you know, make money and, and earn income. And, huh. you know, the PTO was there. I was like, Oh, like, you know, I want to, you know, get my ranks up and, and, you know, get the bonuses and, you know, get my name out there for sponsors and, yeah. and stuff like that so like i was just like trying so hard pushing 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 you know just you know not taking the time to to take care of these injuries and then last year august 21st i think it was um at ironman mantra blonde uh both achilles just like went on me and um just like swelled swelled right up and and oh. like i couldn't even walk coming off the bike and then i was like 
I was like, oh, like, I'm like, I'm done with this sport. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it was, it was so tough. Like, you know, I'm not making money, like, uh, you know, you know, slowly like creeping into debt now. And, um, you know, my two, my Achilles are, are torn, like, and yeah. I can't even like walk. And, and so like, yeah, I, t- I took, I finally took a step back. Um, you know, that was probably like the, the lowest moment in my professional career for sure. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was tough for sure. But, um, yeah, like I took a step back and, you know, some, you know, I have a good friend that reached out to me. He's like, let's, let's rewrite your story. And, you know, he's, uh, mm-hmm. kind of like a rehab specialist, sports chiropractor. And so I worked closely with him for the next two months, um, before I went back to Colorado and, uh, yeah, we just hit the rehab hard, like four to six hours a day um, is, is intense. <laughs> and, uh, wow. yeah. So, I mean, you know, and then slowly had to, you know, rebuild my biomechanics because I was compensating so much with, you know, the bad hips from the bike crashes and the two torn Achilles tendons. And, um, so I started working with, uh, with a good team in, in Boulder, Colorado on that as well. And, uh, so yeah, it was, it was just, a lot of rehab and then rebuilding up my form, my base, my strength. Um, and then, you know, by March of this year, I was hitting good training numbers, but still wasn't, you know, hundred percent and, uh, ended up racing Ironman South Africa, went in there with higher expectations, but then, um, it did not have a good race there and went, I think like 12th, 12th overall, And I was like, oh man, like, you know, you go through all that, you know, setbacks and trying to overcome these challenges and all this rehab and then you're feeling pretty good. And then boom, like a 12th place, like out of the, and, you know, just, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was a, it was, it was a willpower test for sure. So, but, you know, I just, I kept moving forward. I kept, you know, sticking to the process and, you know, kept believing and having that faith that, you know, I, I know I'm just so much more capable of what, you know, I, I, I've been racing and then, um, you know, race two seventy point threes and started, you know, seeing my form come back, come back, come back and started feeling pretty good. And then Roth rolled around. I was like, I was like, yeah, like let's, let's friggin' do this. So, and yeah, wow. I mean, you know, had a, had a pretty good outing there. So <laughs> we'll get into that. Uh, you just shared so much and that is an incredible <laughs> roller coaster ride. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. I, dur- during that time after your Mount Tremblant, where you got, where your Achilles swelled up on you, um, and you were saying maybe this might be it, but when you were reached out to you by your friend who was building you back up during that time, were you still thinking maybe this is, it still or were you just like okay i'm all in one more go yeah yeah actually i i kind of really only told like I've probably just like you know a handful of people um you know last fall i was like you know this is probably going to be you know my last year of racing if you know i don't see you know a good healthy season and you know a good successful season so um you know and some people might be like oh like that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself but i'm like I'm like, that's the reality of it. Like my back was against the wall. I'm like, you know, I can't, you know, keep going further, you know, into debt and not making money at this career. Right. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going, you know, I'm in my, well, you know, really early thirties, but still. <laughs> Especially um, with your background in e-commerce and wealth management, that must've just heard a little bit more <laughs> doing it. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm missing that nice cozy income, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, it, it, it made me, you know, find another level within myself to, you know, hit that rehab hard and really like find another level in, in training as well. And, um, and, you know, learning more about like biomechanics and efficiency as an athlete and, and, yeah. you know, strength and, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, like I literally <laughs> like rebuilt myself up. So, <laughs> Amazing. And I saw some on your Instagram that you worked with Aaron Carson there in Boulder, strength coach. And yeah, I've heard she yeah, can work yeah. miracles, I've heard. And, and yeah, uh, I, I owe her a lot. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's been she's been awesome to work with. So oh, great. So yeah. coming into St. George, I mean and South Africa, right? You were feeling pretty fit and you were still being coached by Ryan Bolton at this time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But St. George, something was a little bit off too, right? This year. 
Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, I was, I was actually, you know, quite fit going into it. And, uh, you know, we, we believed I definitely like, you know, had a top 10, if I had a really good day, a top five for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but going in, like I was still, still having some issues on the bike and, uh, you know, I think it has a lot to do with like, you know, position wise, but also, um, you know, hip mobility and, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So coming off the bike, like, well, coming onto the bike, like my back just kind of seized up and, you know, I just, I, I couldn't even push Ironman power for most of the race. So, um, and then coming off the bike, you know, you go right you know, St. George notorious for the Hills, you go right into the Hills and my lower back would just like seized up for literally the whole the whole run which was you know not fun so um so i think i went like 16th overall there and yeah i mean you know at that point like you know confidence is is quite low <laughs> actually had my had my wedding i think a week after um so I had my wedding um and yeah then got right back into training went to boulder actually had a pretty good race in boulder um which is like okay okay, like, you know, I kind of felt like that momentum swing. And, you know, this, I was like, okay, like this, is where, you know, I'm capable of, of pushing and stuff like that. Um, I was like, I still have a lot more within me. Um, but, you know, I think racing, you just get so much good feedback each time you race. Like, mm. you know, you do things in training and stuff. But when you race, it's like, as, you know, you just get to analyze so much about it. And after Boulder, I was like, oh, like actually like the bike, actually the positions I've made with, with wolf saddles, um, mm. I've been working so hard on, on the bike position with them. And, uh, I was like, okay, like this actually worked quite well. Like I pushed pretty good power here, but I was really feeling like this within my body and, you know, I was getting pain here. So we made those adjustments. Um, and then, yeah, after Boulder is kind of like, you know, that it, everything started really clicking. So, and then going into Roth, I was like, you know, things for the first time in a long time were like really like clicking and, you know, more rhythmic on the bike and, and coming off the bike and feeling good on the run, you know, not all jacked up. So I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, you know, this is, this is a really good stepping stone for me now. So, yeah just listening to your whole story when i met you in roth and i heard your time and what you did there i was like how in the world because i'd actually always seen you pop up on the trackers and been curious of following you on the at the ironman races but now listening to your story and everything you've gone through and, and just some things just so many things not going your way i mean it 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 makes sense why you did that time at roth like the fitness has always been building the experience has always been building and you were just waiting for some things to fall into place and click for you. Um, so take us through Challenge Roth. Um, did you get out there early? How did you get there? How did you get the, do they invite pros to go out there? That kind of thing. Um, yeah, actually, well, it was like, I think it was in January. I was like, I was like, okay, you know what? We're going to do our honeymoon in in greece um and i was like you know what what you know what cool event what big event can i you know really push for before the honeymoon and i was like has to be roth like i was like you know <laughs> world class it's probably gonna be a world class field which it was and i was like you know I was, yeah and i was like let's just you know go up against some of the best and um you know be healthy for it and you know it i guess all the cards kind of align for it so um, but yeah, it was, I was like email Belinda, they welcome me with, with open arms, which, you know, challenge families, just, just awesome about like, you know, super, super accommodating and they, they just make you feel like, yeah, you're, you're part of the family. So it was, yeah, it was nice. And then getting there, you, did you head out early, check out the course? Yeah. 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 I flew in Monday. So got in Monday of race week, um, which I, yeah after experiencing many international races would always recommend uh if you can try and get in as early as you can um to time adjust um you know if things go missing through transit you know you have time for that to come and arrive before race day and uh yeah so i got in monday um rode the course tuesday and uh, i was like dang like the roads are awesome like you know fast really really good conditions uh you know, cool, cool course, like through the rollers, through all the little German villages. And yeah, it was, 
I was like, dang, this is this is gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, take us through the race day then. Swim, bike, and run. Yeah, yeah. So swim was uh, was actually quite quite interesting. So like you know, we kind of jump into the water, and then I was like, oh, like maybe we just kind of mosey on to this to the start line, but then. All of a sudden, like everyone just started taking off. I was like, I'm like, are we starting right now? Or <laughs> like, <laughs> so it literally felt like it was a takeout, but um I was like, Oh yeah, I guess we're trying to, you know, get our positions within, you know, the start line. So oh, wow. <laughs> so I was like, okay, like, you know, I'm gonna yeah, position myself here. Um, gun went off and it was like, yeah, it was actually a quite a, quite a good takeout pace, um, for an Ironman distance. And, uh, as usual, it kind of gets, you know, bottlenecked and turns into a lot of chaos and stuff. So, um, you know, so you just kind of try and find like open water. And, uh, so yeah, I found like usually like uh, a group that, you know, I was like, okay, like this feels fine. Um, and I looked up uh, this is probably like 400 meters into the swim, 500 meters into the swim. I was like looking up and I could see like, you know, the, there's a lead pack, which, you know, is like canoe laid low, um, all the, all the really like Uber swimmers and then the chase pack, which, you know, I usually like to be in, um, I was in the group behind him. I think that was with skipper's group. I was like, Oh shit. Like, you know, I, I, I don't want to be here. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I, uh, I put in a surge and, uh, wow. yeah, bridged up to, to Keenly's group, wow. um, and just sat in there and, and then the pace actually just felt quite easy. So I was like, okay, like, you know, just gonna, you know, just conserve as much energy as I can here. Um, got out and, and then I was like, yeah, you gotta have a smooth transition and, you know, get into this group here. Um, but yeah, the, I was kind of at the back end of that swim group and then we all had good transitions and they took off pretty good. And I actually ran into the fence trying to get my shoes on. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so I, I lost them and I had to put in probably about a 20 minute surge to bridge back up to them. And then, <sighs> and then we had like a good, good solid crew going for a while. And then that. I don't know what climb it is. It's, it's that like 10% grade climb. And it's about like a, I don't know, like a 10 minute pre steep climb through that little village. A greeting and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Greeting. That's right. And uh, keenly just threw in like a, a big, big surge. Like, <laughs> like he like, we just wanted to shred all our legs. So I was like, like we were pushing well over 400 Watts wow. going up that climb. And um yeah. So, you know, going up that climb that kind of broke things up a bit. Mm. And then, uh, I think him and probably like three or four others, uh, took off and I was like kind of no man's land. So I was just riding by myself and then a uh, skipper came by and I was like, all right, like, I think we're about 40 seconds behind them. So like, let's, you know, let's, let's catch up to them. Let's work together and rode a skipper for literally most of the ride. And, um, uh, the only mishap I had was, uh, it was probably about a kilometer 140. Um, I was kind of ripping through the age groupers going through a village and one age grouper kind of like came over into me. So like I locked up and oh. went into like kind of bunny hopped into the curb and almost like went into this building and then I like, yeah, I kind of get back onto the road and, um, by that time, like the, the skipper, the skipper group is gone. So I was, yeah, in no man's land for probably the last, you know, 30, 30 kilometers, which I think, you know, I definitely lost some, some time there, but, um, I was like, all right, like, let's just play it smart. And then got into the run and I was like, yeah, actually, I didn't really know what place I was in, but, hmm. um, until that, until the own back. And then I realized, I think I was like in uh, 11th place and then um just yeah settled into into my pace and um yeah uh, i just knew like the last 10 kilometers was pretty hilly and that's where you know i, I really wanted to you know push as hard as i could through that section and uh you know that paid off because i think i passed like three three athletes you know in the last 10 kilometers and kind of brought me up to like that that seventh place so all right, so a 50 minute swim, a 414 bike and a 239 run with a 74659. 
did you surprise yourself with that result or was this like um, i knew i had this yeah i i i would say like i knew i had that within me um the overall time i was at yeah when i crossed i had no clue what what time i was at but um but yeah like in all three disciplines it was kind of like you know that first race where i was like you know this kind of reflects where you know i my training's been at and and you know what i'm capable of and i think like yeah reflecting on the race i was like oh you know i still think i if i was like 100 percent on i would have had probably four more minutes in me on the bike if i like you know didn't go through some of those mishaps and and uh, I was a little bit more diligent on my nutrition, especially in the last, like, you know, 40 to 50 K. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of like, you know, really analyzed it. And I was like, you know, I, and then I was like, you know, I still have so much work to do, you know, on my rehab and biomechanics. So I was like, you know, I have a lot more within me, but, you know, this has been like, you know, a really, really good stepping stone. Um, and, you know, just got to appreciate everything I've, been through and had to overcome and you know finally gain some momentum again which you know it feels it feels nice but um yeah it's just it, yeah it's it, it was a good good like stepping stone and yeah really you know happy with that so from everything you've been through and the story you shared with us i mean this must have been like such a high moment and i want want to hear your opinion on whether you think like some of those lows have brought you to this point like being able to go through all the biomechanics again doing the strength work do you think that's factored into that performance yeah yeah i think 100 percent. so um and yeah i think like looking back <laughs> as hard as it was to go through everything um you know it was kind of a blessing in disguise for me uh, because I learned so much about biomechanics, you know, how can I be you know, more efficient? You know, it brought me to Aaron Carson, um, uh, Lawrence, who's like a running coach guru, um, my rehab specialist back in, in Calgary, Canada. Um, you know, I just like, you know, I started surrounding myself with great people. Um, you know, Sam Long, good training partner, mm. got a, you know, pick his brain a little bit too about the bike. Cause he had some back issues and, you know, it's just like, I, yeah, I just have learned so much. Um, and, you know, just want to keep, keep progressing, keep growing, keep learning. And, you know, just, yeah. I mean, like I said, just, I think I have like, yeah, a lot more within me that, yeah, that I want to, you know, keep working at. So. And it must feel like a bit of a team effort just with the amount of people that you shared there. It must feel extra special to share that now with a lot of those people yeah yeah it does for sure <laughs> fantastic so you went on your honeymoon to greece afterwards that must have been extra special as well and uh what's next for you yeah so actually right now um i'm training in, in france and uh yeah learning more about uh, all the cycling around here which is quite technical hilly and it's super fun uh you know gotta see some of the tour gotta ride some of the the tour routes um so yeah training here in france uh and then gearing up for a 70.3 in poland uh, which is august 6th and then uh my biggest objective this year once they announced it was uh ironman canada in penticton bc um yeah as soon as they announced i was like like I've been wanting to race this as a professional, for like my whole career and it's finally here. And, uh, this one has so much meaning to me. So, um, so that's kind of like my biggest objective this year is to go there and, you know, just, yeah, see, see what I can do. Um, and then, yeah, you know, obviously Kona is definitely the focus for, for next year. So I got a couple of questions from that. First of all, for yeah. people who don't know, Ironman Penticton is like a legendary race. So if you won that, it's basically in Canada, like winning Kona. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah, an amazing race that has so much history. And then Nice with South Africa, was that the plan to go try and qualify there at first? Or was Kona always the big goal? Uh, yeah, Kona, Kona was always the big goal. So yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, I, I got a race Nice in 2019 at the 70.3 World Championships. And I was like, oh, like cool place and everything. But, you know, I, I still don't think that course really suits to my strengths. And um, and for me, like, you know, I still want to square away a couple things 
you know, on the bike and biomechanically uh, before I go on to, you know, that big stage. Uh, and for me, you know, Kona is with my history at Kona and everything like, you know, I want to go there as a professional ready to go and, and see what I can, you know, truly, truly do there. And uh, I think Ironman Canada is kind of like that first stepping stone. So love that. Can you take us through a week in the life of Jason Paul? to get that challenge Roth uh, <laughs> result and then to get ready for Penticton. It's, I mean, full-time job, that's for sure. But <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I don't mind sharing at all, but uh, yeah, Mondays are usually uh, recovery spins. So not, uh, 60 to 90 minutes and then a longer swim, usually five to six and a half K um, more like endurance, long set focused. Uh, yeah. Just nothing nothing intense on that day tuesday usually uh, a harder bike ride um with like yeah more like strength focus so like hills and stuff like that run off the bike and i'll usually swim three to four k before that um the bike sessions usually between four to five hours and then the run off the bikes usually i don't know five to six k um wednesday usually uh hour 20 run um more strength focused and then leading up to races a little bit more speed focused, but, uh, and then uh, more of a quality swim. Um, I was swimming with Ian O'Brien's, uh, ITU <laughs> crew. <laughs> and, uh, so like it was, it was a speed kind of threshold day. So threshold run, threshold swim at altitude really <laughs> kick my, <laughs> kick my ass. But, uh, <laughs> and then I'd end the day with, uh, with like a 60 minute flush out ride. And then Thursday, just long aerobic bike ride, three to four hours, um, you know, 200 Watts, keep it low heart rate and then, uh, easy swim. So, and kind of more of like, you know, get the bike done and, you know, do some like technique work in the pool and then recover for the rest of the day. Oh, well, and some strength, I guess. <laughs> and then, um, Friday is aerobic run, usually seven miles. That's been pretty consistent. And then, uh, yeah, four to five K quality swim. And then Saturday is usually six to seven hour bike ride. Um, with like, yeah, either like just go in the mountains and ride or, you know, some, you know, specific intervals. So depends on like where I'm at in the build, uh, run off the bike. And then Sunday is usually the the long run day with, um, some quality. So, and that's usually, I don't know, hour 45 to two hours and then swim and strength that day as well. So that's, wow. that's a typical week. <laughs> so, so how many hours is that usually? Um, yeah, it, it usually comes to about 30, um, you know, and mm -hmm. in, in the heat of the volume, you know, it can get up to about 34. Wow. Uh, so, but then, you know, the, <laughs> the other hard thing is just like, you know, eating enough and get enough calories in and, and yeah, <laughs> that's, that's usually the, the biggest challenge. So <laughs> yeah, you're a, you're a taller guy, bigger guy like me too. So <laughs> just require that extra amount. Yeah. It seems to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's an insane week. That's pretty impressive. A lot of time on the bike. Um, and it looks like it's paying dividends. Um, all right. I've kept you for a long time <laughs> and I know you've had a big draining day, I'm sure today. Um, but we're going to hop on then to the hot question. If you don't yeah, mind. Absolutely. Um, all right. <laughs> okay. Well, being a little bit topical, have you seen the PTO us open start list? Uh, I have. Yes. Who's your pick for the win? Oh man. <laughs> I, I'm really rooting for my, yeah, from a good friend, Sam Long. So, yeah, got to got to go with him. <laughs> I love it. I honestly can't wait to see that. I, I know, I know. He's he his motivation is really high. He's in good form. So yeah, he's and he has that seventy point three distance really dialed right now. So he's gonna be uh yeah a tough one to beat. <laughs> I think so. His I know his kid is on the way really close around this. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it might be a little intense for him, but uh, yeah, that's a great pick. Okay, next one. I'm going to give you a second one here. You're appointed the new CEO of Ironman. What's your first thing you're changing for the pros? Ooh, all for the pros. <laughs> um, I would say, 
yeah, obviously increase the prize money for sure. So we haven't seen a, I don't think a pay raise in the last few years. So <laughs> um, that's a good one. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I would definitely say that. Love it. All right. Rapid fire to end us off. Thank you so much for your time, Jason. I've really enjoyed yeah. this and hope we can do it again. <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> sweet. Okay. If you weren't a triathlete, what would you be? You, would you still be doing the wealth management uh, now that you're you're a little bit past it? Yeah, I'd still. I, I think I'd still be in the investing world. Um, okay. Always been a passion of mine. So, yeah, love it. Horrible chafing or horrific GI issues. Oh, oh man, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> think Iron Man too. Ooh. Would you rather? Which yeah. one would you rather suffer from? Probably, probably horrible chafing because. <laughs> Yeah, that, that one's just pain. You can do your best to try and block out. GI is, yeah, I've been there before and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Are you organized or unorganized? Uh, organized, yeah. Yeah. Thought so. All right. Hip hop or rock before a race? Uh, yeah, hip hop. All right. Pasta or pizza? Oh man, two of my favorite. <laughs> oh geez. Uh probably gotta go with pizza. Okay. Would that matter uh post uh before race or after race? Would you prefer one or the other? Uh usually pasta before race. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've had pizza, a greasy pizza before a race and led to some GI issues. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, sprint finish or would you rather dominate the whole thing? Oh, sprint finish. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are way too cool. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. All right. And then hockey or triathlon. Ooh! If you could have been oh, a pro gosh. hockey player in the NFL, or or you win Kona, yeah, oh, I, I'd say winning Kona, yeah, oh. for sure. Although pro hockey players and pro football players make a significantly <laughs> a lot more, but um, the meaning and you know what you have to get through to you know win an Ironman, let alone win Kona, is yeah, it, it's it's just insanity. So yeah. I love it. Thank you so much, Jason. That's fantastic. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to seeing you at your next races and especially hearing about Penticton. And um, yeah, and, uh, yeah for everybody listening, where can they follow you? And uh, uh, yeah, Instagram is probably the best, to be honest. So yeah, okay. at Jason.pole. So Perfect. and yeah, thanks a lot for having me on this. Um, it's awesome about your story, too. And you pursuing your passion and your dreams and uh you know what you're doing for the tri community so yeah it's it's definitely an honor to you know be on here with you i appreciate it thank you so much and uh yeah best of luck like i said yeah thank you and i'm super jealous you're watching the tour and riding around the tour that is not fair <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool all right cheers Thank you for watching the video. If you're new around here, then don't forget to subscribe. This channel is all about helping triathlon become a huge sport through weekly news videos, highlights, motivational videos, race reporting, and anything else you can think of with a splash of my own triathlon journey thrown in. The goal is for this to become the YouTube hub for everything professional triathlon, and I'd love to do it full time to give back to you and create an amazing community. To help me do that, I need you to get behind me by supporting me for the price of a gel on either Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can also join in on the conversation on Discord and follow me on Instagram. The more support, the more content. And don't forget, it's simple. Try every day. We'll see you in the next one.